Here's a video guide through lesson 731, talking about what makes quadrilaterals special, and we're really studying quadrilaterals on a grid. So we spent the whole 7.2 talking about what makes quadrilaterals special and proving special things, such as the opposite sides of a rhombus are parallel, or the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent. We were writing flowchart proofs, and we were writing two column proofs in that 7.2. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna evaluate some of these special features with looking at these on a grid. So you'll see in this lesson, for example, maybe um, a rhombus on a grid, and they'll ask, is this really a rhombus? And we're gonna have to prove that it has all equal sides, or we'll have to prove that the diagonals bisect each other. We have to prove some of those special things, which we're gonna be able to do because it's on a coordinate grid. We'll be able to find out the lengths of each side and say, are they congruent or are they not? Um, we can find the equations of the sides to figure out are they parallel to each other, are they perpendicular to each other. And so we can find out information about these shapes just because we have them on a grid. So let's take a look at the first one. The first one is just kind of introducing how we're going to do some of this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot point A and B. So we have 0, 8, so you go over 0, up 8. And then you have 9, comma 2, so you go over 9, up 2. And you have your line AB. We can label that AB as well so we know which one that is, A and B. All right, the next one, you have three, uh, 1, 3, and 9, 15. So you go over 1, up 3 for C. You go over 9, up 15 for D. And you have your two lines that you want to figure out. All right, and you look at these lines, and the first thing they're going to say is, we drew the two segments, let's find the length of each. Well, to find the length, I use the slope triangle, okay, because the slope triangle is going to be a right triangle, which allows me to use the Pythagorean theorem to find distance. So to make a slope triangle, I got to go from point A to point B using straight lines going straight down and straight over. So I go straight down, and I go straight over, and I create my slope triangle. Well, when I count my segments here, I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I went down 6 units, so that's negative 6, because we're going down, it's negative. You go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Since we went to the right, that's a positive 9 units. Now I can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the length of AB. Because I have two legs of a right triangle, I can find the hypotenuse using A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Since negative 6 and 9 are legs, we can write that as negative 6 squared plus 9 squared equals c squared. Ultimately, here we get 117 equals c squared, which ultimately then c would equal 10.82, I believe, when you round it. Okay, So you can do the same thing with cd. You can create, and I won't solve this one for sake of time and for the sake that you still need to do part of this lesson. Okay, You can create a... Uh, again, slope triangle, we read it from left to right, so you go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 units. Since I'm going to the right, that's a positive 8 units. And then I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and you go up 12 units. Okay. The next, we need to write equations for both of the lines, and we're going to do that using y equals mx plus b format. And so let's do the line for a, b. Uh, we have y equals mx plus b. We can replace m with what the slope is. The slope in this problem, well, we already have the slope triangle, and we our slope is always rise over run. And here we have a rise of negative 6, a run of positive 9. So that's negative 6 over a positive 9. That's a fraction that can be reduced down, and so we can divide the top and the bottom by 3, and we'd end up with an equation that was 2 over 3x. Now, we still need to find a B value, and so what we can do is we can plug in an X and a Y based on a point on that line. Well, A is a point on that line, B is a point on that line, so we can plug in, let's plug in point A, which means 8 is going to be our Y value, 0 is going to be our X value. So we have 8, let's plug it into math notes, we have 8 equals negative 2 over 3X, and the X actually gets replaced by 0, excuse me, plus B. Solving this for b, it's pretty simple here. We have negative 2 thirds times 0. Well, that's 0. So ultimately, 8 equals b. And I can write my final equation, which I'll write below. The equation of this line would be y equals negative 2 over 3x plus 8. And there you have an equation. 
Now you can write an equation for CD as well. You'll do the same thing. You'll start with a slope, which would be 12 over 8. You'll plug in a point on that line. You can either plug in point C or point D, and you'll use the X and the Y. You'll solve for B, and then you'll write your final equation, plugging in your slope and your B value there. When you have your second uh, equation to that line, um, also you've got, again, need to find the length, because this is the length of AB. You'll need to find the length of CD as well. But once you have the second equation, you can answer part C to whether these lines are parallel or perpendicular. Remember, if lines are parallel, and this is not the answer, this is just notes, but if lines are parallel, the slopes are the same. So when you find your second equation, you can look at the slopes. This one had a slope of negative 2 thirds. You can look at the slope of your new line. If they're the same slope, so if they're both negative 2 thirds, then you can say that they are parallel. If the lines are opposite reciprocals, then they are per perpendicular. Okay, opposite reciprocal, what that means is that one is positive, one is negative, and the numbers have been flipped. And so opposite reciprocal, an example of that would be like three over four. The opposite reciprocal to that would be a, let's use, um, let's use just like a space here. So the opposite reciprocal here would be a negative four over three. One is positive, one is negative, and the numbers have been flipped. So if you see this relationship, you're allowed to say that they are perpendicular. Now again, this is kind of a warm up to just evaluating a shape, which was what we do in slide three. Okay, what they say is, and this is kind of the big problem of the day, is they say they think this is a trapezoid. Well, if it's truly a trapezoid, then it should have one pair of parallel sides. That's what it means to be a trapezoid. So we need to evaluate if these sides, any of the sides are parallel to one another. And what they think is they think that HA and SY are parallel to each other. So what you're going to have to do is, again, you're going to have to write an equation for HA. You'll have to write an equation for SY, and you're going to have to evaluate their slopes. Again, we're going to write equations in Y equals MX plus B format, and you're going to write them just like we did with the lines here in part B. It's just different lines with HA and SY, and then again, you're going to evaluate their slopes. If they're the same, then they're parallel. If they're not the same, then they're not parallel. If they're opposite reciprocals, they're perpendicular. Now, HA and SY, they're not going to be perpendicular, but they could be parallel or they could not be parallel, so we're going to have to evaluate the slopes that way. Here on slide number four, what we want to do is just find all the other special properties of this shape right here, okay? And some of the special properties to look out for are congruent sides. So find the side length of each side here. One that's really easy that I'll give you is HS here has a length of five because I can just count it. It has one, two, three, four, five. It's got a length of five. See if any other side lengths here have a length of five because that's just interesting. That's another special property that we want to talk about. The other thing that you can test is see if HA, which you have an equation for from the last slide, is perpendicular to AY. So you have to find an equation for AY, and you can evaluate if you have actually a 90-degree angle there. Slide 5, we have this must-be, could-be slide, okay? And it says my quadrilateral has four equal sides. It must be something. It could be something, okay? And this one I'll do for you. Okay, when they say my quadrilateral has four sides... I start thinking of shapes with equal sides. So I think of a square, I think of a rhombus, okay? Well, it could be a square, but it's not necessarily a square because we don't have enough information. It says the quadrilateral has four equal sides, but to be, so if it was must be a square, we'd have to know that it also has four right angles, all right? And we don't know that, and so we say it could be a square, but it also could not be a square. But it must be a rhombus, because with this information, four equal sides, that we can just say that it must be a rhombus, because if it's not necessarily a square, then it has to be a rhombus, okay? Same kind of thing for B, C, and D. We think, what, what must it be? What could it be, okay? And then lastly, slide number six is our formative question. Formative question, you just work to try to prove that PQ is parallel to SR. The only information that's given is that this is a rhombus, okay? This is the kind of proof that I want us to focus on because this is the proof that we'll assess on. Not exactly this one, but this is the type of proof we'll assess on. And what I mean by this, it's the type of proof where you cut the shape into two triangles. You'll prove that the two triangles are congruent, and then you're going to draw a conclusion saying, okay, I know the two triangles are congruent. How does that explain or how does that prove my conjecture, which again is PQ being parallel to SR? Okay. One thing that'll help, you know it's a rhombus, so when you justify things, you could use the definition of a rhombus. All right, that's it for this lesson. If you have any questions or you want to see something further explained, just let me know.